Cool. Hi everyone. At the end of the uh, the day on Sunday, when we we're doing the uh, the sparkler shots, um, I was explaining to to Lindsay about how I went about uh, getting them at, on you know, weddings and the like, but I didn't really want to stand there and tell a complete know it all on the day and so <laughs> see how I do it. But she did suggest that I do a quick video on explaining how I do go about it. So this is what I'm going to try and do tonight. Uh, it's getting a bit dark, so what I'm going to do is show you how I set up my my camera, set up the uh, the flash, and see show you how I uh, capture flash front and back then freeze the, the couple uh, rather than try and do something crazy with long exposure and the like. So let's go have a look at how I've got everything set up. All right, okay, so here we have my, my Nikon uh, on the tripod with flash on top. Um, I'm on live view just to try and show. It might be a bit bright, we'll see if we can change that in post. But effectively, what I try and do is have a, a wide aperture as possible. I'm here on f1.8, I've got a 35mm lens on. For today, I'm putting at about 125th of, one, sorry, 125th of a second, just because we are a bit light here. So if I just take a quick, quick shot. Um, oh, well, that, that flash went off. Hang on, if I turn this flash off and do that again, you will then see that I have pretty much a, a dark frame come up. Bit of, bit of light in the corner there, but that's cool. So what I try and do is. Um, so that, that's basically simulating as if it was was night time. So what I'll do is the uh, the flash that's on on top here. I'm going to take that down to about one eighth power. Uh, the far flash as well. I've got that as a slave. Uh, the Nikon system allows you to set the power on that far flash remotely. However, if you've got a, a manual flash, you can just dial the power in and set it to a normal optical slave. So I'll just go and turn the other flash on. Two seconds. So now if I take this shot again, you'll hopefully see that we've got the, you know, everything pretty much well lit, you know, it looks a bit daft there, but, um, so what I will do, I'll just pause this, I'll set up the self timer and I'll try and capture a, a gurning look of my, so what I've done is I've set a five second timer on the Nikon, so I just switch this round to uh, timer mode, uh, you can see on the live view, I've still got the scene in front of me, so I'll just do a quick uh, run and, uh, See if I can get in, in time. So, hopefully it looks suitably stupid. Uh, and, of course, far too bright and <laughs> uh, nowhere near the right place. Let's, um, actually what I will do is, well, I'll explain one other thing I'm doing here is my uh, flash is set. I don't know if you can perhaps see this, I'll show you that in a little while. Uh, rear. So, and again, I think Lindsay was asking about that. So effectively, the, when you press the, the shutter, the shutter opens, you capture the light. As the shutter closes, then the flash fires. So what that allows you to do is capture more ambient light from around the scene uh, before the flash goes off and captures your, your subject effectively. So let's just do that one more time and I'll try and be... Actually, let's just turn this uh, power down slightly. So if I go to... Uh, this one. Let's go down to 1 16th power. That's probably more than enough. I'll leave the far one on, on 1 8th just to get a good um, rim light going on me. So here we go. Right, let's see how stupid I look there. Wonderfully stupid. So obviously I'm not very well framed. I'm not very well in focus. But if you've got a real couple, a real client out there, you would pre pre-focus it first. Uh, I suggest that you'd use a, a torch maybe just to get the focus in, in place and if it's properly dark then I would suggest you know uh, a shutter speed of well, well we're 125th now probably 160th or, or 130th a second is probably more than enough. All right so I know that was a bit a bit Heath Robinson but that's basically what I'm doing so the far flash are there to give a rim light around uh, the client, the flash on the camera here is then just to illuminate from the front. So if I'm doing a sparkler shot where I want to do uh, some some writing, some, some um, I'll show you something in a second in the video, love and joy, or their names for example, I do that afterwards. So what I'll do for that is again back here in the garden, I would obviously remove the flashes completely. I would then set myself up with uh, a load of sparklers and I'll just be over there like an idiot, lighting them and practicing the words, going back to the camera and seeing how that does. So again, that'd be a very wide um, aperture. Probably keep the ISO quite low still, just because I do want it to be as black as possible and only pick up the sparkles from the sparkler. Um, and then once I do that, I take that back in the computer, I make basically the black background transparent. I then cut and paste that onto uh, the image 
uh, within Photoshop. I, I flip it, I size it, I, I adjust the brightness as I as required, and uh, yeah, and then that's the final article, which I'll, I'll show you in a bit. Um, one of the tip that you might want to use, uh, obviously these flash guns are daylight balanced. Uh, spark guns are very orange usually, it depends on, on what brand you get. You might want to put a, a coloured gel on here, like a, a, an orange gel, just to match the colour of the, uh, the spark so you don't get any weird uh, colour casts. Uh, and that's about it guys. So um, what we'll do, we'll go inside in a minute, get onto the computer and I'll show you some examples of what I've done in the past. Right, just before we do go in, I was just going to show uh, the effect of the rear curtain sink feature on the flashes just, just before I go in, just because it, it, it boggled my mind for quite a while. So if I just go into uh, the settings and just do normal flash and put this onto, onto manual, and spin this awkward dial around just so it's on 1 16th. So basically this is on now 1 5th of a second. So if I just click it here, you notice that it goes flash straight away. If I can turn this around, I don't know if that'll show up on this or not, but if you go, uh, let's focus on go. Oh, here we go, I'm going to take the picture now. So straight away, it takes the flash as you press the button. So as the shutter opens, it flashes, and then no matter how long it's open, for 30 seconds, 30 minutes, nothing else would happen until the shutter closes. But if we now uh, go on to, wrong button, if we go on to rear, so again, now if I take the picture, click, tell you what, I will make that a much slower uh, so here we go, about one and a half seconds so if it behaves click and as it closes it made the flash I'll show you that again, so open, shut and as it shuts, then you get the flash so what that does for you is it brings in much more of the background light into your scene before uh, you then illuminate the subject and uh, one thing I, again I was trying to explain on, on Sunday was uh, another picture I'll show you in a bit is I can have this camera with a flash on top I can open it for 30 seconds again very low ISO but quite a wide aperture and what I've done is I've gone round the, the couple with and if I just do this quickly what I can do then is as I as this camera is waiting I can just be going flash around the couple like this get out the scene and then this will close but then capture the, the, the couple afterwards so I'll show you one of those as well Cool, right, let's go inside again. Well, okay then, so as explained outside, now back inside, I'm glad this is a very narrow view because then you can't see what a mess this room is. But uh, let's just click over to, to Lightroom and if I bring this up, what I'd like to do is just show you some examples of what I've done in the past using the techniques I've explained outside. So this was a wedding from a couple of years back. That's Tom and Amy um, uh, near Watford. There's the Shinley Creek ground. As you can see, uh, so what did I have? Uh, standard zoom, 17 mil, so nice and wide. It was only one and a half seconds. Like I said, I wasn't trying to capture that sparkle. I just wanted them posing, holding a sparkle, if you like. Um, you can see if we follow the mouse over here, you can see um, the, the flash behind uh, captures some of the smoke. Um, if I do this again, obviously I'd perhaps hide that a little bit better behind Tom there. But again, you know, all I had was a pose. I then afterwards wrote the, the word at home and I superimposed that uh, over the top. But I had to do was actually down this side, the frame only actually came to here, so I had to use some content to fill in Photoshop to extend it out. And you can see that with the join there. And again, in color, and again, the join's a bit funny there, but you know, you can see the, the effect there. And it looks reasonably, reasonably good there. Uh, not bad for the first attempt. Uh, this was one last summer, um, bit of a test shot. They're, they're a bit fuzzy, but again, really short, um, um, exposure there just to capture them again you can see the flash behind them again posing out and that then turn into this with, with the writing on um, yeah black and white hit some of the uh, some of the sins but again you can see see the effect so if I was not going to use spark and do something a bit different um, I did this for them um, what I again I'll probably do I'll probably do it the same again I guess this is with my 35 4.8 on um, what I did was I still had I actually didn't have a, a flash behind them, just had the flash on the camera. What I did, as you can probably just see if I probably put the screen uh, with the mouse, you can probably just make out me here. So what I'll probably do that, if I do that again is wear more dark clothing so I didn't appear. And I was just like bouncing back off her white dress effectively, not illuminating me as I walked around with the flash. Bang, 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 bang. You can see a 12 second exposure and I think I'll probably be using an infrared remote to start the, the camera in bulb mode, do my flashes as I walked around. 
off camera, click it again, shutter close, well, flash on the camera fires, shutter closes. Um, so that's how I use that, that technique. Um, some of the other sparkler stuff that we were talking about, um, this was um, one in Norfolk uh, last summer. And again, uh, I did use flash on this one. Again, it was uh, on camera flash. Again, just opened up for, you know, only one eighth of a second. You know, it wasn't very long. You've got enough space there to see some of the movements. But again, the flash uh, and quite a high ISO of 800 there, been able to capture um, the scene. And again, similar, so this was uh, the same couple as before. Again, just, Again, this time I should use no, no flash whatsoever. This was uh, on a D600 full frame camera, slightly better at capturing uh, light. So, again, 35mm at 1.8, um, only 160, 160th of a second, but you see how high I've got the ISO there just to get some. There is a bit of, bit of noise in there, but it's a question of do you raise the ISO and have a bit of noise, or do you get nothing at all? Um, and just a couple more examples before I finish really. So this was um, a go to wedding last November in Kings Lynn. Uh, really great moon shot. So again, I did a few test shots. I did have a flash firing on them, but for this one actually there isn't a flash on them. It is merely the flash behind, um, making it look as if the moon is illuminating them. And you wouldn't know there's a main road running just there. So that's quite cool. Um, looking at it now, I would probably have tried to clone this out or moved them that way a little bit just to, to hide it up, but that's just me being picky now. Uh, and this is the same couple out the front of the, out the hotel. Again, flash behind them uh, and flash illuminate them just to give um, a nice bit of rim light, bit of drama to the scene. Um, you know, so again, using the on camera flash, uh, you can the flash behind them on a slave and using that rear curtain sink. So you're capturing some of the scene first uh, and then you're capturing the couple. Um, as the shutter closes. So I think that is probably uh, enough of me waffling on. So if I uh, open that again, um, sadly you've probably still been able to see my, my mug down there. Um, yeah, that's about it guys. Um, I hope that's useful. Um, again, as Joe said on the day, we don't know everything I sure certainly don't know everything. That's what I've used for a reasonable amount of good effect. Uh, if you've got any good ideas or comments, yeah, please let me know and we'll go from there. Um, cheers guys.